Hello, my name is Michael. I work for RL Systems. In this video, I'll be working through a very simple CAD Simplus model. It will cover the basics of setting up a simple stream chemistry and making the most basic simulation we can, which is a single process stream. As a note, I'll be doing this work in CAD Sim version 3.2. Most of the aspects we will cover in this video are consistent between versions, though you should find relevant information uh, even if you're using a different version. So on the desktop here, I'm going to launch CAD Sim Plus 3.2. Uh, you'll notice the resolution I'm using is quite low, and this is simply to give a better view of what's happening in the toolbars within CAD Sim Plus. But I'm going to select File, New, and maximize the sheet, and this is our drawing page here. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is draw a single process line to represent a pipe. And I'm going to choose this option up here, Draw Process Line. Note that it's different from this option over here, which is a non-process line. So drawing a process line will have some simulation aspects to it. A non-process line is simply to add clarity to your drawing uh, without affecting the math behind the simulation. So I'm going to left click on draw process line and we'll notice we start at the, our anchor point down here. And fairly basically to draw in CAD Sim Plus, you're going to left click to place a pipe arrowhead and the pipe is going to continue on. If we want to go a different way we move the line again I've left click there, left click and we can continue on that way. If I've made a mistake and I want to undo that I'm going to press escape or select the selection key up here. I'm going to press escape in this case and I didn't, don't like this line so I'm going to press delete. I don't like this line so I'm going to press delete and now I have this line down here which I can select by left clicking within draw mode. Notice I can move this around as well. I can move the endpoints by selecting the endpoint, dragging it up. Now I've got a diagonal line. I can select the endpoints by clicking and dragging like I've done there with a the left click. Alternatively I can also left click directly on the object to get the full selection. So here again I'm going to select this, drag it up so I have a straight line. If I want to move the entire object as one field, I can select the middle here and left click and hold and I can drag this line around. So it's fairly fairly basic once you get the hang of it and it's worth playing around with a bit in order to do that. Again we can select the whole thing with a window as well. Over here on the right we have information about this line such as its color, or what layer it's on, or its thickness, uh, arrow length. Uh, in this case, they're worth playing around with. For this video, though, I'm going to leave them alone. We'll notice as well that after drawing this line, we have a chemistry flask up here that's lit up. Because we have a chemistry here associated with this process line, we need to know information about what is passing through this line, and that's what this chemistry dialog box is for. So I'm going to select this, create chemistry, and it gives us this dialog box saying we need a chemistry for process number zero, and that happens to be the process number associated with this blue line that we've created. So I'll select create, and that sounds good to me. And we'll be prompted to come up into this dialog box here, which is called a stream definition. You'll notice behind we have the flask. This is actually in our drawing, and when we finish this I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. The stream definition is a very important step for specifying your entire simulation, so it's worth taking a few extra minutes to set it up correctly. Changing things later on in your simulation, such as adding components or changing units, can have an effect through the entire simulation, which requires your attention. So if you can do it correctly here, it will save you a lot of work in the long run. We obviously have two different sets of units we can use as defaults, either default American, where we have pounds and feet and Fahrenheit, or default SI, where we use kilograms, meters, Celsius, etc. As well, we can change certain things to the units that we'd like to. So, for example, in mass, if we'd rather use tons than kilograms, we're welcome to select that. In this case, I'm going to choose the default SI set, so I'll select that again to reset the mass change that I made. However, I'd like the volumetric flow rate to be in meters cubed per hour, so I'll go over here and select this one. Finally, I'll select Next to go on to Stream Type. 
There are various options for the stream type within CAD Sim Plus. For this video, however, I'm going to leave them to their set defaults as a chemical stream. More information can be learned about this through the help files, which you can access through here or through the help directory in CAD Sim Plus. For now, however, I'm simply going to select Next. The Components tab is where we'll set out most of the information that's passing through any of the process lines. We'll start by making a very simple stream chemistry. On the left we can see the types of components we can add to our simulation, sorted out by category. First we will add water. This is a very, very common thing to add. So under the liquid category I've left clicked to select liquid. I've left clicked to select water here. Now we can either push it over using this add button, conversely we can push it back using this, or we can simply double left click and water will go into the selected components. We can add other mass components in a similar manner. For example, in this simulation, I'm going to add gypsum right here, and I'm going to add ferric chloride. So in this case, I want to add aqueous. So we'll find ferric chloride, aqueous. So those are the mass components that I'm going to add. Notice we can add many more than that. However, we also want to add temperature. Temperature is not added by default. However, by adding temperature here, we're going to start doing an energy balance as well. Of course, you notice there's many other categories to select from, and we can't cover them all in this video. But if you're interested, again, the help menu is available. For this model, I'm going to leave pressure out as well. Having completed this, I'm going to press Next to go to the next page. And now we're on the Derived page. Notice all the pages we've been to so far in the stream definition are on the top in the ribbon, ribbon up here, so we can go back and, and see what we had done before if we need to. The Derived page allows you to define your own variables that you would like to monitor or control within your streams. This is a very useful feature of CADSIM Plus because you're able to create your own variables and CADSIM will recognize the dependencies. This allows you to specify free variables in the streams by setting the dependent variables that you have set up here. The simplest example of this would be having temperature in different units included in the stream. I will check this box here for alt temperature and now we have a temperature in Fahrenheit within the derived field of our stream. As a side note, in CADSIM Plus you can use the back tick in order to denote degrees Celsius and that's underneath the tilde symbol on the top left of uh, your keyboard. Back to the derived alt temperature, we see this expression here within the derived page and it's terminated by a semicolon. Using this we can actually create our own free variables. Up here we have a create wizard. As an example of using this editor I want to add a derived variable for the concentration of ferric chloride in the stream. First I select create and then I'll give it a name. In this case, I'll call it FeCl3 concentration. And then I'll choose the type of equation I want to use. I know this is a ratio of the mass of, of iron chloride divided by the volumetric flow rate. So I'll press OK. And we get an expression that looks like this. So on the top, I'm going to choose ferric chloride and in the denominator I'm going to choose the volumetric flow rate in meters cubed per hour. I'm also going to add a constant um, and this is going to be a thousand in this case because I want the concentration to be in grams per liter whereas right now we have kilograms per meter cubed so I'll enter a thousand in as well. Press finish. We'll notice again we've created a new expression that begins with the symbol derive in all capital letters and is terminated with a semicolon. At any time we can press check chemistry within this window and it will look to see that you haven't made a mistake and it will look to see that we haven't made a mistake in how we've defined things. And this is a useful tool to get a general idea of the syntax happening within these expressions. Generally they're pretty straightforward and you're free to actually write your own in if you want. However in the example of the ferric chloride I've forgotten something. There's no units. So we can add this by editing the editor, editor directly. 
we're going to put in brackets and then the units, in this case gram per liter, and terminate it with a bracket. And the way I've known to do this is to look up here at the example with the alt temperature. And now in our streams it will report the units as gram per liter for this variable. Again, I'm going to hit check chemistry to make sure I haven't made a mistake while entering values. And everything looks okay so far. The derived variables page is very useful for creating variables specific to your case and your plant. We'll use them to specify our stream later and to get a better idea of how effective they can be. For now, however, we're going to progress on to the Estimates tab by pressing Next Page. The Estimates page is often overlooked. Its purpose is to give CAD some an initial point to begin its streams with when there is no start file to initialize the stream with. This happens when you first run your simulation or you've added new streams to an existing simulation. We can speed the time up that it takes to sit for the simulation to settle out by providing estimates for the streams. In this case I will simply insert the CAD some defaults for all of my components by selecting here, left click, insert, 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 insert. You do not need to insert estimates for all your simulations. However, it will generally help you bring your simulation to steady state faster, especially when you're adding new process components. At this stage, we are ready to exit the stream definition for our process and begin setting up the variables for our stream, or specking the stream as it's commonly referred to. So we'll select Finish. Notice the stream chemistry we created is on this flask here. If we select the flask and choose to edit it, we'll go back into that page we were working in before. For now, let's move on to specifying our stream. But first, let's save our drawing, because this is a pretty good place to do that. We will now finish the last step before our simulation is ready to be run. We have a stream, we have what's expected to be in the stream, all that's left is for us to specify how much of the components are in the stream. And to do this, we'll start by entering simulation mode and begin specking our stream, or applying the specifications to it. We'll be prompted to specify each of our components to say how much is in each stream. I want to spend a quick bit of time explaining what each of these controllers and specifications does. On the left we have two types of controllers. The first is a flow PID control. This is what we refer to as a quick flow controller and this is going to manipulate a stream flow component in order to satisfy some sort of criteria. A simple example of this would be a level controller in a tank. So control how much water leaves a tank to control the level to 50% for example. To the right we have a PID controller that's not applied to a flow component. In this case we could apply this to energy lost from a stream in order to satisfy a temperature. Next we have specifications. There's two types. We have single specifications and we have multi specifications. A single specification is going to specify a flow such as kilograms per hour of a single item. This typically we're going to use for items that change or are important in terms of flow rate. So I'm going to choose a single specification for the water and I'm going to choose direct setting. Finally I'll press place. We'll notice as I drag the cursor around the dialog box for the water spec is moved around with it. I'm going to left click and it will prompt me asking what I want to specify. So I can, if I want, to specify water, say I want 100 kilograms per second, I will type that in there. Alternatively, we can also specify it based on any of its dependents. So we notice volumetric flow rate is highlighted. So I can select volumetric flow rate and say I want 20 cubes per hour to flow. Notice I cannot select calcium sulfate or ferric chloride in order to specify how much water is flowing. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to press finish here and then I'm going to take a look at this other specification type generally called a multi-spec. 
So I'll select this one again. The difference between a multiple specification and a local specification is multi-spec will stack on top of itself. You'll get a single dialog box for all of your flow components. I'm going to press place, and select where I want it on the line, and we'll get something that looks like this. In this case, I am going to specify it as a set variable. I'll choose 0 0.1 and press finish. Now it's asking me for fair chloride. Again, I'm going to leave it on specification or multi specification. I'll place that and I'll place that and layer it on top. Notice it doesn't have to be exact, but as close as you can get it, such as there, and it automatically jumps into that specification. So I'm going to press finish for this one. And finally, temperature, I'm going to use the multi spec again. I'm going to place and on there and I'll change the temperature to 25. Press finish. At this point it will prompt you to save the file. I'm going to select yes. And now we have the simulation ready to run. I can select the multi-specification and see all three of those specs that I had stacked on top of each other. And from here we can change what we want within the simulation mode. To run the simulation we have two options. We can press run, which will just run indefinitely or run in single passes. I'm going to choose run indefinitely. We'll notice the time in the bottom corner scales upwards. We see how fast it's going in terms of real time. And at any time we can select on a process line here and see how much water is flowing, how much gypsum is flowing, ferric chloride, temperature, as well as some other derived variables such as flow, density, concentration of dissolved solids or energy flow. So this is an introduction to the most basic simulation you can make in CAD Sim Plus. I'll be continuing this example further um, in continuing videos. Thank you.